Good morning. Coffee. Just coffee. <laughs> um, let's talk about cart paths and specifically not making cart paths. You should already know how to do that in a previous video. But donuts and the length of your cart paths, which could cause problems later on in Blender. Okay, a lot of the things we do in Inkscape look fine in Inkscape, but cause problems later on inside of Blender. So let's get into this and, and figure out <clears throat> what those problems are. And they're almost specifically with cart paths, right? So why do we need to break up our cart paths? And what specific instances <clears throat> am I talking about breaking up or hollowing out our cart paths? So donuts cannot be processed in Blender. And I'm going to get in a little more detail about exactly what a donut is, because that can be a little confusing. The idea of a donut is it is a shape that has an outside and an inside. Think about like a loop, OK, or a donut. A donut has a hole in the middle, right? Um, you can't have those inside of Blender. We can resolve those in a couple different ways, which we're going to get into. Um, another thing is extremely large cart paths can cause problems in Blender. Um, they have a large number of nodes. They have a lot of processing to do. And if you think about a cart path that spans the entire course, that cart path has to cut through a lot of different things. And it can error out. So the general rule of thumb is, um, and you can get away with more, but don't have a cart path that spans maybe more than, than two holes. OK? Um, I'm going to show you an extreme example of that here in a second. Um, so first of all, let's talk about what is a donut. So what you're looking at here is an Inkscape screen capture. And down here, right here in the middle, you'll see I have my cart path. And then I have my satellite image underneath it. And this is a donut. It has an outside, OK, which actually goes off screen because this is all one shape. It has an outside perimeter and it has an inside perimeter okay this kind of triangular looking sharp thing which actually could cause its own problems because it's got this sharpness to it um that is a donut and we can't have those inside of blender uh let me give you another example um do you see any donuts here okay so you know take a second and look and you might say to yourself, yeah, I see a lot of donuts, right? I think I see one that's like here, here, here. This is a parking lot area, you know, here, here, here. Well, you're, actually, you're wrong. There's actually not a single donut here um, because if I remove all these shapes are sitting on top, all the green shapes here are actually sitting on top of a concrete underlay. And if I remove those, that's what it looks like. There's no donut here, okay? Essentially what I'm doing is I'm punching through the concrete with all those shapes, okay? So no donut, this is not a donut. So it's very important to understand when we're considering what a donut is, it's one shape in and of itself um, does, ha, doesn't, uh, has an inside, okay, here, has an inside and outside, um, but here it does not have an inside, it just has an outside, okay? So that's a donut. So just because something looks like it's going to cut you know, if the shapes cut through and it looks like it's going to make a donut, no, that's fine. You can cut through and create what we call a donut in Blender. It just can't go into Blender as a donut. OK, um, so let's let's look inside of Inkscape and let me show you a couple of uh, other examples here, which is this. So this is Kapalua. And what you're looking at right now is the cart paths of Kapalua and uh, the satellite underlay uh, that's you know, sitting underneath it. And you can see here, there are a lot of loops, OK? Um, I see a loop up here, OK? Uh, I see a loop here. Uh, I see a loop here. I see a really big loop that goes like all the way down through here, all the way up and around and over. And on top of this, let me just click on this guy. This is almost just one cart path, which is going to and does cause problems inside of Blender. So we got to do a couple things here. One is we just want to cut this cart path up into smaller chunks. And two, we got to get rid of those loops. OK, um, so let's talk about that in, in a couple different ways of how we get rid of donuts and how we break up cart paths. So there are two ways that we can break up our cart paths. One is we can slice them, which is we'll, we'll put a, like a, a slice into the, the loop or the cart path so we divide it up. And another option is the punch out. 
So let's talk about the slice first. So if we come back here into Kapalua, and if you recall, we've got this big gigantic cart path, and we got to do a couple things here. One is we got to break this up into smaller chunks <clears throat> so we don't have issues in Blender. Not only will we not have issues in Blender, but it's going to help us troubleshoot. Because if we have a problem in this cart path, it is going to be next to impossible to figure out where it is at. So if we break it up into smaller pieces, if it errors out, we'll be able to find those a lot easier. Blender might either flag them as not cutting correctly, or when you go to inspect them, it's going to help. Okay, so one is we've got to break these up. Another thing is we have to make sure that we break them up. We have to break them up strategically because we want to break up the loops as well. Now, I'm not going to do all the loops in the video here, but let's look at two in particular. So one is we've got a, car, a loop right here. Okay, a fairly big one that covers, I think this is like two or three holes. Right here, there is a loop. Okay, and if we do this strategically, all right, so there's one loop. And then there's another loop here, this big one. This one spans like this neighborhood. It goes all the way up and round, comes back over here, all the way around over here, back, and then up through here. All right, so that's another loop. So two loops, this one and this big one that wraps around. We can actually break these two loops up in one shot. So what I always try to do, if I'm going to use the slice method, okay, which is going to take a chunk out of our cart path, I try to do it in a spot where most likely someone's not going to see it, okay? And in this case, knowing the course, um, this cart path goes kind of down this hill and goes way back into the corner. No one's going to be over here, okay? Now, you guys flying around watching the designers and stuff, you know, F5, you might see it. But if I put a slice here, it's actually going to break up two loops, this one and this one. So this is a good spot to do it. Now, how do we do this? So we're just going to go over to our shape tool like we normally would, like as if we're drawing a T-box or any other shape. And we're just gonna draw, okay, a very thin, okay, not paper thin and not razor thin, okay, a pretty big thing like that that goes across the top. Now this is on top, okay, and you have to make sure that that shape ends up on top and it has to be in the same folder as your cart path. So if I come over here, you'll see that if I highlight my cart path, that car path is in the same folder and the shape that we just created on, is on top. So now I got my shape that I created highlighted. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to click on the other shape that we want to cut through. So I've got those both highlighted. I'm going to come up here to path and we have all our union operators here. Okay. And if you'll see this, there's one called difference. And if you highlight and hover over it, create the difference of the selected path. Okay, the selected path, bottom minus the top. So it's gonna take the bottom shape and subtract the top. So if I do that, what do you think's gonna happen? Boom, all right? Now, this creates this kind of sharp edge here. So if I come over here to node mode, I, can, I just take these guys right here, and I just tend to, oops, it's not what I wanna do. First, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I don't have these tight corners. Okay, so if I hold down shift, and I highlight these guys on the corners, and I'm just gonna go up here, I'm gonna round those off. And you can see that looks a little ugly. I can fix it. Again, no one's probably gonna see this area, so it's not that big of a deal. And I'm just gonna kind of round stuff off here. Oops. I'm gonna make sure to avoid things like that. So now things look much better. They're round, they're smooth. That's probably gonna cut correctly. This one looks a little sharp. But it looks okay, so we, I can round that out by pulling that out. And that looks pretty good. So now we just slice that guy up. But you'll notice that when we did that, let me zoom back out again. If I go to my node selection tool, and I highlight this, it's still one giant car path. <clears throat> okay, so now what we have to do is you really should divide this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at some areas that I think I could divide this up. One is down here. I got this whole area down here. And I want, I want to kind of remove this. Not remove it, but I want to break it off. Okay. So what I can do is I can find some strategic areas here. So this is a hole here. Right. So I probably don't want to break it up here, right where the T-box is. Um, I'm going to probably break that up maybe up. There's probably a... Now, if you if you can't figure out where to do it, what I do is when someone else did, you just 
park a, like a golf cart on top of it or something. So here's a decent spot, maybe up here. I'm going to go over this area. And we're going to do the same thing we did before, which is we're going to take this tool and we're going to draw again another sliver. Okay. But now when I come up here to my shape selection tool, I'm going to select that. Then this bottom one, I'm going to come up here to path and I'm going to do division. What's division? Cut the bottom path into pieces. All right. So when I do that, I divide. And now what happened? Well, my original one is still there, but it's now a piece. So if I highlight that, let me zoom in here. And you can see, now I can see it there. So I've got it highlighted. And I can hit delete. And now we got a gap there. All right. Now this is still one cart path because, well, I don't have it really divided because it's still connected all the way down here. Okay. It's still one piece. So I still have to put another sliver here someplace else. But you'll see that now I have that divided up, right? And I should probably round these corners off, but you guys already sh I showed you guys how to do that. And most likely I would disguise this with some vegetation or something. Or I might have picked a more strategic place to do that. So let me find another spot here. <clears throat> oh, I zoomed out too far. So I got that divided piece. I'm going to do it like right in the middle of this neighborhood because no one's going to come out. This is actually a road. So let me do it here because there's going to be a couple houses here. Let me do a uh, new, drawing another sliver here. So I got that highlighted. Go to my pointer, my selector tool again. Hold down shift. Now I got the cart path, path, division. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to delete that original shape. And now you can see I've got a separate shape here that has been now been broken off. So if I hide that, now that is now a cart path that is much more manageable. Probably isn't going to have any issues in Blender because of its sheer size. And if it does have any issues, this is much more reasonable to come here and take a closer look at rather than this one that's spanning for kilometers and kilometers around the whole course. Okay. So that's how we do what I call the slice method for breaking up our donuts and breaking up extremely large cart paths. Now let's take a look at the punch out. So one of the simplest ways to do a punch out <clears throat> is to simply trace some new shapes and place them on top of a solid cart path. So in this case, I traced out this cart path here. You can see that I've got this parking lot. There's a building in the center of it, which will sit on top of it as well. Um, there's a practice screen over here. Then you have like these islands of grass, the landscaping here, the spot here. And you can see uh, if I just, all I did was I created a new hole. This is called hole 69. Oh, geez. Um, and all I did was I just traced these out. Okay. And I made this folder, okay, or this layer, okay, I put it on top of my cart path layer so it sits on top. So now when I turn on my cart pass, you can see that that just sits on top and all those punch down through. That's pretty simple. That's one of the easiest ways to do it. Um, and in that case, you never had a loop to begin with. Um, so I'm not even sure if that's technically a technique. That's just no different than what you do on fairways and greens and all that stuff as well. OK, so that's one way. That's a very simple way of showing what we can do with the punch out. OK, so now let's talk about this donut that I have here. And let me show you that this is indeed a donut. So if I remove this rough area here, you can see that once I remove that, I've got a donut here. I've got an inside and an outside to this car path. OK, so with that in mind, and let me show you also what this looks like. So if I highlight the car path. You can see that the cart path is overlapping that rough area. And the intent was, oh, the cart path will just cut through that rough area. And, and But unfortunately, because it's a loop, that's not going to happen. OK, so this will not go through Blender. We've got a loop. So what can we do? Well, there's an easy way, and then which was is good. And then there's a more difficult way. So let me show you the easy way first. 
the easy way to do this would be, and let me hide this rough area, would just be um, to trace a new area here, okay? And what we do is we come over here and we're just going to create a new shape and we're going to get as close as we can using this manual trace out tool. Well, it's not, It's this is the same as you've been tracing out of the shape at this point. So what you would do is you'd be very careful and you try to capture this inside edge as closely as you possibly can. It's not going to be perfect, but you can get pretty darn close. Now I've done that, and you can see I'm going to sign it, uh, let's see, rough. Um, and at this point, we've got this shape here that we've created. Now I'm going to go to my node select tool, highlight the cart path, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold down shift. And I can shift, I can click and drag. The bottom line is I want to select all the nodes here in the middle. Okay. And then when I have a bunch selected, what I can do is I can just hit delete. Or I can do them one by one and just hit delete. And when I do that, you're going to see what's happening here is that is actually going to fill in on the inside get rid of our, our cart path, not our cart path, but it gets rid of our loop here on the inside. Let's see, this one. Now, if I come back here to my select tool, highlight that rough shape that we just created, let me find it here. You can see, that now I'd have no loop and that rough's gonna cut through. And it's gonna look pretty good. Now, the reason for this is this is a tee box. So I don't wanna put any slices. I don't wanna break this up. So in an area like this, now I could put one behind it and no one probably noticed, but maybe you have an area you just don't wanna slice like that, okay? So that's one way of doing it. Uh, that was what I would consider the, the more easy way. Let me show you the more complex way. I just have to reset here and get it back to the way it was. Now, if you want to, the second and more difficult way, and you may have to pause and watch this a couple times because it gets a little complex with the Boolean operations inside of Inkscape is, so I've got my, again, my shape that is sitting kind of underneath. When I say underneath, let me hide this cart path. So you have to have a shape that is sitting 100% underneath and can be cut by your cart path. Okay, you see how there's some overlap between the cart path and that rough area? So now what we're going to do is we're going to use a Boolean operation, the division one. I'm sorry, not the division one, the difference. So I've got my cart path highlighted. The first thing that I need to do is I need to duplicate it. I need to create a copy because when we, we do this Boolean operation, the, it's going to get deleted. So we don't want to delete the cart path. We still need it. So we need a copy of it. So when we do the Boolean, the copy gets deleted and we still have the original. So I'm going to hit Control D. Now, it looks like it didn't do anything, and that can be a bit confusing, but I do have this new path over here now, and if I hide it, well, it doesn't look like it's doing anything. Well, that's because we've got two duplicates here that are doing the that are exactly the same, so if I hide one, I'm just seeing the one underneath it, okay? Very important. Another thing that's important is that duplicate is on the very top, and remember, when we do the difference, the top shape cuts the bottom shape, the bottom shape in this case being this green. And if you recall, that green sits underneath that car path and there's some overlap. So I'm gonna hold down shift and highlight my, my rough area, this green area here. So now I've got two shapes. I've got my duplicate cart path sitting on top of my rough area here. Now I'm gonna come up here to path, difference, and you think, eh, nothing happened, except it did, it cut this rough area underneath here to exactly the right shape so it looks awesome now okay it's we're no longer relying on manually tracing that out now how do i prove that let me highlight that car path here and let me hide it and you'll see when i hide it it's perfect it's in exactly the right spot okay or if i hide that shape look what happens here it fits in there perfectly but unfortunately we still have a loop 
or I'm sorry, a donut on that cart path. So what do we have to do? We have to go back to the cart path. And like we did before, we go in node mode. And you're just going to go around here and delete all these nodes. And then when you do that, it'll start filling back in again. Make sure you just do the inner ones. And you could do the uh, lasso, like click and drag to highlight more than one. If it makes sense, I'm just going to do them one by one here. Now, if I come back here and I turn on my rough again, whoops, wrong shape. Where did that rough go? Uh oh. Did I accidentally delete it? I might have deleted it. I did not delete it. It just happens that it was on the bottom. So this is where you have to be careful when you're doing things like this and understand where your shapes sit in the hierarchies. So here's my cart path. I'm going to hide this. There it is. It's all the way down here in the bottom. I'm just going to move it above it. If I turn that back on. Now we should see it. OK, so that's the more difficult method. So we can slice a path, we can punch through it, and when we punch through it, we can either do it the easy way or the hard way.